Hello everyone and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program 2 video. What are we doing in today's Kerbal Space Program 2 video I hear you ask? Well, I'll tell ya. I've always had a soft spot for air launchers. In the past, I've built all manner of air launching craft, but today I decided to try something new. Something bold. Something definitely safe. In KSP, rockets are typically air launched by either building a double fuselage aircraft with the two fuselages joined by a structural wing that supports the payload so that it hangs between the two, a bit like how Virgin Galactic launched their space plane. Or alternatively, there's the method of having a single fuselage plane and strapping the payload either above or below it. There's also the method of launching from below a large aircraft after being dropped from a payload bay, like bomb style. But this was always a bit sketch as there was always a large risk of the front of the rocket colliding with the forward end of the payload bay inside the aircraft. But in KSP2, there is a way in which we can improve this launch method and make it very safe. As you may have figured out from watching the time lapse and or looking at this video's thumbnail potentially, by using the Starship fairing as the air launch plane's nose cone, we can fly the plane up to altitude flip it vertical momentarily, opening its nose cone, and then launching the rocket vertically. Can you imagine something like the Lockheed C-5 Galaxy doing something like this? The front of that plane can open up a bit like the KSP-2 Starship fairing, so I would very much love to see it, and I'm hoping that someone senior in the US Air Force is watching this video and is taking notes. Now, I thought I was very clever coming up with this design, and I actually shared a preview of it on my Twitter. Shout out to her, at Matt Lown. But then it turned out that someone on Reddit already had this idea, username Johnny One Shot. However, I feel that my design is an upgrade because my payload will not just be heading into mere space, but will be landing multiple Kerbals on the surface of another celestial body. And since Johnny One Shot never stated where their payload went, I'm just going to assume slash hope that they never got further than LKO. I mean, my plane and my rocket use larger diameter parts, so, you know, they're, they're bigger. And of course, bigger is always better, you know? <laughs> In the time lapse, you'll now start to see me adding stuff that was decided to be necessary after doing some test flights. I did some solid rocket motors to the side of the plane after realizing that this thing is just too big and heavy to nose up vertical on its own without rocket powered assistance. And I also added some wheels along the fuselage of the rocket because it has a bit of a tendency to slap against the sides of the cargo bay and cause an explosion. To that end, I also moved the cockpit way to the back of the plane because the cockpit was again being struck by the rocket upon attempted launch. So yeah, this was definitely uh, I, I, the product. It's a very safe plane, guys, very safe. But it wasn't that safe during tests. But now we've established that it is safe. We can go ahead and paint it into its final color scheme. I decided to keep things fairly basic, very simple. Painted the rocket a nice red and white color. And then the plane, I painted this nice sort of sky blue color. I think it, uh, I think it turned out pretty nicely. But it's all right looking nice. But will it fly? Nice. <laughs> So here we are in the process of taking off, and yeah, it uh, doesn't really go anywhere too fast initially, so I'm going to speed the footage up a bit, just to improve the frame rate and of course speed up the uh, duration of the flight. Let's go ahead and check out that landing gear underneath, and oh, uh, no, nothing to see there. Uh, one of the landing gear decided to spontaneously explode. Luckily I brought redundancies again guys, this is very safe. But we are just on our way. In fact, I've sped the footage up to be even faster now, just so we can really get to our launch window nice and quickly, because I know that's what you guys, that's what you guys are here to see. And here you can see me pumping fuel into the rocket's fuel tanks. Uh, the jet engines are draining from all the fuel tanks, but obviously I don't want them draining from the rocket itself. But speaking of the rocket itself, I think it's now time to start thinking about launching it. I tried a couple of different launch windows, and I felt that uh, starting my pitch up maneuver worked best when I was at an altitude of three kilometers. So here we go. We fire up those two SRBs, and then once we're about 45 degrees in our angle of attack, I cut the throttle to the Goliath engines because we want the plane to be basically stationary in the air by the time the rocket launches. Otherwise, the rocket just can't clear the cargo bay. But as you can see, it cleared the cargo bay absolutely beautifully, and we are now on our way to space. Nothing is going to stand in our way between us and that final front. Ah, oh, the Kraken killed the rocket. Luckily, this is just a game because running a space program would get pretty expensive. 
playing with real starships is a bit too expensive for you and I, but at least we can always play with pixel starships. In the game, Pixel Starships, the ultimate mobile sci-fi strategy game and sponsor of today's video. Pixel Starships just received a massive expansion that brings bigger, more devastating items to the game. And let me tell you, it takes the excitement to a whole new level. Now, let me show you why I love Pixel Starships. I mean, just look at my own machine. Pixel Starships allows you to build and manage your own starship in an MMO world. You have full control over every aspect, from your power systems to your crew, mining, and of course, engaging in epic battles. And the best part, you can trade and battle with millions of other players. Whether I'm challenging other captains or exploring new territories, it keeps me engaged for hours on end. Plus, the competitive element really pushes me to constantly improve my skills and tactics. The game can be played on both mobile or on your computer. It's amazing. So what are you waiting for? Download Pixel Starship using the link in the description below and receive $100 worth of Starbucks as a welcome gift. And to sweeten that deal, use the promo code MATLOWN125 after registering to get an extra 125 Starbucks. Check out the pinned comment for all the game info and tracking links, and remember, Pixel Starships is constantly updated with new content, and it's most assuredly not pay to win. So join the adventure, and let's conquer the stars together. Anyway, just prior to that devastating Kraken attack, I did in fact make a quick save, so we can go ahead and quick load that, because I, I, I don't feel guilty about this, because this was clearly not my fault. So here we are, re-attempting, and wait for it, oh, did you see it, the, the plane? It did that thing where, like, spent stages or, you know, abandoned landers chase you. So maybe that was the reason that my rocket exploded, but then I watched the footage back and then that didn't happen. So, don't know, Kraken was, Kraken was trying to, like, get his way into meddling with this mission. But luckily, uh, everything went fine from here on out. <laughs> Not, no, no, there, there was a, there were a couple more Kraken strikes, I, um, I regret to inform you, unfortunately, but you'll, uh, you have to wait and see who. Uh, those unfold before you as we continue on our adventure. We're now on stage two of our three-stage rocket. I mean, I guess it's kind of stage three if we count the plane as the first stage. But of course, the plane will be recovered, just not on this timeline. Uh, once again, I must confess that this, uh, this air launch is only possible by either killing all of the crew of the aircraft or killing all the crew of the rocket. Uh, you can't recover both, unfortunately. In fact, this has been largely true for pretty much all of my air launch missions I've ever done in Kerbal Space Program 2 and Kerbal Space Program 1. I think I've only ever done one air launched mission in KSP-1 where everything was recovered. Maybe I should try and do something similar again in Kerbal Space Program 2, but today, my friends, is not that day. I mean, Kerbal Space Program 1 has the caveat that there is a mod that allows you to kind of control both vehicles after they separate, but uh, this is obviously not Kerbal Space Program 1, and the mod does not exist for Kerbal Space Program 2, and when I was playing KSP-1, I frankly just could not be bothered to install that mod. But here we are, unfolding the solar panels as we enter space and uh, begin our circularization burn, well, I guess planning our circularization burn to ensure that our crew are in a stable orbit. What I'll then do is make a quick load to a point in time, you know, just after the rocket separated from the aircraft, and we'll go back and just get the aircraft back to the Kerbal Space Center, just to prove that if, you know, this was a real mission, like, say, in multiplayer, where one player is controlling the aircraft, one player is controlling the rocket, this would theoretically be possible. And that's one of the things I'm really excited for when it comes to uh, potential things you can do in KSP2 multiplayer. And when it came to performing the plane flyback back to the Kerbal Space Center, the Kraken didn't want it. So I've paused the game so I can more easily switch to the aircraft. Just uh, double click it. There we are. There is the aircraft in its deployed state or post deployment state. Let's unpause the game. And ah, I wasn't, I don't know what was happening, but you can see the three crew on the top of the screen there. So that's the crew of the rocket. So something is glitching out here. I think the game is just treating the aircraft as a spent stage, as a piece of debris. So I reloaded it a couple of times, I went to the tracking station and tried to select another craft, but literally nothing worked. And to make matters more complicated, none of the other quick saves from that mission worked. The craft fell apart upon loading. So instead, I used this quick save from a test flight. Now the only real difference here was that I tried to launch the rocket at a higher altitude. 
You see, this was before I realized that three kilometers was the best altitude to launch from. Here, the atmosphere is too thin to get the lift required to flip into a launch orientation. Obviously, at this point, I wasn't really bothered about launching the rocket because I was just trying to recover the craft. So I just nosed down to let it just fall away and crash into the sea. And we can get Tim C. Kerman and Bob Kerman back to the KSC. Now, one thing I'd forgotten was that the action group that deploys the rocket also shuts down the Goliath engines, and I didn't have an action group that would uh, re-enable them. So I quickly had to create an action group just to get our engines to turn back on. And somehow in doing this, all of the control surfaces stopped working. Um, you rewind, you'll have seen that they were working before I set up the action group, and then as soon as I set up the action group, uh, they, they stopped working, and I was just... Uh, in an uncontrolled downward spiral towards the ocean. So I made a quick save and a quick loaded it and miraculously the control surfaces were working again. And I'm pretty sure that was the last Kraken attack in this mission. Like we still have to deal with some of the, the buggy quirks of Kerbal Space Program 2, but that was the last big game breaking bug that required quick saving, quick loading in order to overcome it. Now you can see me getting used to the new performance characteristics of the aircraft. Obviously we've not got that big heavy ballast that was the rocket inside the cargo bay. And indeed, you know, the aircraft's overall mass is much lighter now. So the six Goliath engines are suddenly overkill for flying us back to the Kerbal Space Center's runway. Not that you can really see the plane too well, the bloom on that ocean, the bloom effect is a bit overkill, isn't it? So I just try to fly over there as fast as possible. But there's the runway coming into view, and my goodness, look how wobbly those wings are. Uh, Nate did say that they are aiming to have non-wobbling wings in Kerbal Space Program 2. I mean, come on, this is, like, ridiculous. Like, sure, I've got it strutted as well. I shouldn't need struts for wings on. Like, I feel like this is a fairly realistically proportioned aircraft, right? Anyway, speaking of the aircraft... As you can see, we have all of our landing gear. Yes, a bonus of not being able to use the aircraft that I planned to use, as in quick loading the aircraft that launched the rocket that you'll be watching for the rest of this video, is that on this particular test flight, the landing gear did not explode before takeoff. So uh, we had all of our landing gear. Now, as you can see, there are three sets of landing gear either side of the fuselage. So we would have been able to land regardless, but it's just nice seeing it touch down all in one piece. We can pretend that nothing exploded, nothing went wrong at any point in this mission. <laughs> at least that's what I tell myself so that I can sleep at night. But anyway, enough of boring aircraft recovery. Let's get back to space and plan our trip to another celestial body. And yes, it's Minmus. Uh, we don't have much delta V, right? We've only got, you know, 2,871 meters per second. That does limit our scope of destinations. I might be able to land on the Mun with that. I can't remember the exact Delta V figures to land on the Mun, but I feel like we might have enough Delta V to scrape a Mun landing. Not sure, but I've done a lot of Mun landings on this channel, at least when it comes to KSP2 and KSP1, now I think about it. And Minmus, I haven't done that many Minmus trips in Kerbal Space Program 2, and Minmus is great in KSP2 because it has a really cool Easter egg that's actually possible to find easily in Minmus orbit. I won't say much more than that, but I did do a live stream if you want to go on my channel and look at my live stream VODs where I visit it. But if you don't want to spoil yourself, just go to Minmus, perhaps get yourself in a polar orbit, and just watch the ground, and you should see it fairly easily. I'm not going there on this particular occasion. We're just going to go somewhere nice and easy to land and safe to land. We're going to the Greater Flats, or one of the flats anyway. Probably the best destination for any beginner to aim for in Kerbal Space Program 2 and Kerbal Space Program 1. You know, the Minmus Flats, perfect beginner destination. They were my beginner destination, as in they were the first place I landed on when I started playing KSP1 all the way back in the day. Because Minmus, although it seems like it's a more difficult destination to reach than the Mun because it's so much further away, it really, really isn't. Because, you know, it take, once you're there, it takes basically no Delta V to circularize, and it takes very little Delta V to land on. And generally, the thrust weight ratio of any lander on Minmus is going to be very very, very high so it's an extremely forgiving place to land on as well so if you want to if you want to plan your first ever mission in ksp uh basically build a giant aircraft uh, flip it up and then launch the rocket like that that can be your first ever uh yeah i i think it's kind of ironic that i went on a big tangent about how mimus is really great for beginners having done a ridiculous and somewhat difficult and complicated uh launch system for this for this video but, you know, the fun of the video, I think, was, you know, the whole act of launching the rocket in such ridiculous fashion. I thought the rest of the video doesn't need to be kind of as high stakes, I don't think. Uh, anyway, here, there, there's the flats below us. 
I don't know how I feel about the appearance of Mimus in KSP2. On the one hand, I really like the realistic appearance of it. I just feel like it could be a little bit more minty. A little bit like if we just, I could just tweak the saturation in the video. Like that, I think this looks a little bit better having it this minty. What, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. And hey, if you are enjoying the video so far, don't forget to leave a little like as well. It really helps me out and all that. Anyway, I'm just going to turn off these effects now so you can watch the video in kind of normal saturation. Oh, it looks a bit, looks a bit dark now, doesn't it? I mean, I guess the rest of the game looked worse when I did those effects, but the surface of the planet, I mean, I did those effects in like initially about 10 seconds, so if I put some more time and effort into it, then maybe I could have achieved a better look. But I don't know, just something, it's just a bit too metallic, a bit too grey for my liking, Minmus. Perhaps I'm alone in these thoughts and I'm just rambling to nobody, but I don't know, what do you guys think? Anyway, here we are disembarking our rocket. I forgot I forgot to add ladders, which is fine because on Minmus jetpacks work okay. Let's plant our flag and see if we actually get our custom flag or if the custom flag glitch plays out and we just have the default flag. Oh, we do have the correct flag. And it's my Christ, my crack and slayer merch once again. You just purchase it in the description if you want a crack and slayer hoodie. Uh, I, I feel like I've proven myself a crack and slayer in this video. We've had a surprising number of crack and attacks. You know, KSP2, I feel like, has been getting more and more stable with each patch and hotfix. Uh, we've had a couple of, like, almost like release day style bugs in this video. Oh, actually, that does remind me. Uh, uh, speaking of my merch, a lot of you have been posting and sending me pictures of your plushies all arriving. And I know I did say when I started my plushie campaign that I would do a competition in which you have to take a picture of your plushie in a really cool location. And then I choose the best picture. And whoever got the best picture gets a copy of Kerbal Space Program 2. I'm still planning on doing that. I'll go through that competition in a little bit more detail. I'm, w I'm waiting like a couple of weeks because I'm aware that some countries the plush takes a bit longer to ship to than others. So I'm waiting for it to be kind of a level playing field before I kind of go through how that competition is going to work. But don't don't worry. I have not forgotten that. I'm not, I'm not going to let you down. And I have been thinking if you've already got Kerbal Space Program 2, you probably don't want it again. So I'll probably give away some, maybe like some like KSP merch or like my merch instead. I saw that. I haven't really put that much thought into it. Uh, I only thought about doing free KSP 2 and then I thought, oh, I bet a lot of people that watch these videos actually probably already have Kerbal Space Program 2, so maybe a, a different prize would be better. We'll just uh, watch this space a couple of weeks' time. I'll leave it like two or three weeks, and then I'll announce the competition for real. But if you want a head start on the game, if you've got a plushie, take a picture of it in a place that's really cool and legal, and uh, uh, then store that picture, and then when the competition rolls around, you can send me it, and we all have a fun old time to look at it, look at our plushies in, in cool in cool locations. <laughs> you can tell I really script these videos, can't you? Anyway, oh my goodness, the mission is rapidly approaching its conclusion. We have left the surface of Minmus. I was talking that entire time. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm talking for the entire video, right? Because it's a, it's a commentary video. But I was off on a tangent, not paying attention to what was on screen the entire time. And now we're about to begin our uh, journey back to Kerbin. I mean, we've kind of already started the journey, if you count the planning of the Maneuver Node. I keep saying Maneuver Node. I know the devs want me to say Maneuver Plan, but it's just, I'm set in my ways. I've been playing KSP1 for goodness knows how many years, like eight, nine, ten years. Uh, long, longer than I want to really think about, to be honest. I think it's like nine years, not ten years. Not quite a decade yet. Uh, but yeah, now I'm suddenly having to think of saying the word Maneuver Plan. And also, like, the phrase Maneuver Plan. The whole point of that phrase is to make it more friendly to beginners. And I think, in terms of the grand scheme of making KSP2 more friendly to beginners, um, that's probably fairly low on the <laughs> on the list of things. Maybe like you know the, the bug fixing, which to be fair, we, it's just the developers' credit, they are rapidly squashing bugs. But I think it's going to be a little bit of a while before we see our KSP2 gets to a a good state for beginners. I mean, the pessimist in me is like, we're probably not going to get science uh, until 2024. That's just my gut instinct. I don't want to be a negative. Don't want to be a negative Nelly, a pessimistic Pete. I don't know, <laughs> uh, but given the speed of like the fixes and the patches, I think it's taken them, the, the, there's more to patch than was probably first anticipated. And so I'd be very surprised if we get science uh, before the end of the year, but I would love to be proven wrong. And uh, I thought, you know, speaking since since we don't have re-entry heating, why not just try and land the entire Minmus lander, eh? We've got a parachute to slow our descent down. The Poodle engine probably doesn't have quite enough thrust in it, uh, at least at sea level, to provide a landing without the help of a parachute. But, you know, it can still help slow us down for that last little bit. 
Oh, yep. I, I'm, I, I love the pause menu that they added in KSP2. Because it allows me to save landings. Like, as you can see, this is a pretty much as flawless of a landing as you can get. So thank you, pause menu. There. Unironically, though, it, it's been great. The pause menu, what an, what an idea, what a feature. Uh, but anyway, yeah, there, there's our lander. Landed peacefully in the countryside. As you bear witness, my patrons, their support makes all this content possible, as are sponsors like Pixel Starships, who once again kindly sponsored today's video. Click the link below to get the game free with $100 worth of Starbucks, and remember to enter the promo code MATLOWN125 to get an additional 125 Starbucks. Anyway, there are two other videos for my channel on screen that each of you think you'll like, hopefully those are good picks, and hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Let me know what you thought of it down below, and thank you for watching.